everybody. Uh, welcome to the webinar. I'm just waiting for a few more people to come in. Just give me a hi or a thumbs up in the chat box if you can. And nice to meet everybody. And just um, mute yourself, otherwise it's going to be chaos <laughs> if there's so many people here. Can you uh, everybody just mute themselves if you if you if you can? Thanks. Oh, I can mute you. There we go. That's better. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just going to start in a couple of minutes. I know it's a, a weekend, so uh, hello everybody. If you've got any question, just put it in the chat box, and uh, I just want to ask everybody. Uh, how many times have they read the case study? How many times have you read the, the pre-scene case study? How many times? Hi, Jamil. Hi. Hi, Major. Three times. Well done, Jamil. Once, only Luca. Only once, Luca. Amy, twice. Good. Uh, Rashida, three times, four times, a winner. Arcana, four times. Eight times, <laughs> wow, Elaine. Super. Props to you, right? Uh, finished it yesterday, finally. Okay, that's good. Well done. So, uh, we'll start in like literally two minutes. So, I just want to make sure everybody's in. Once everybody's in, we're going to start off. Okay, so just any, as we go along, just ask any questions in the chat box because there's quite a lot of people here today. Um, it probably would be good if you um, yeah, did it in the chat box. Otherwise, if everybody's muting and unmuting, it's, it, it's a bit chaotic. So please ask any question you like in the chat box. Somebody, somebody is unmuted. Yeah. Okay, we'll just be one minute. We're going to start off. Uh, if you're late, you're late. Can you hear me okay? Can you just give me a thumbs up? You can hear me okay? Yeah. Everybody can hear me, right? I think. Just make sure your speakers are switched on. If you can't hear me at any point, just let me know. It should be, it should be broadcasting. But sometimes the mute button gets hit and uh, causes problem. Kurt can hear me good. Diane back can hear. Uh, Kitty, just make sure your speaker is switched on, everybody. Okay, so I'm going to start. Welcome to the SBL pre-scene uh, pre course. Uh, uh, not a course, but a webinar. Basically, welcome to the pre-scene webinar. My name is Marty, and uh, I'm going to take you through the March 2024 examination. But if you've got any questions, please ask as you go along, very importantly. So I want to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, first of all, I, um, I did my first lecture in 1992, which is a long time ago now. And if you want to get in touch with me after this lecture uh, and want to do any of my courses, please get in touch. Basically, I now am um, full-time preparing people for the SBL examination. That is my full-time job. I am uh, here to help people get through the examination. I've got a, a long course, which is tuition and revision. I have got another course, which is uh, a revision only. And all those, have now, all those have now gone and been sold out. So I'm now just got one course left, which is the mock course. So what I, the mock course could be relevant to you if you're interested. It will close on Monday. 
Uh, if you want to buy the course, you've got like about three days left to do it. What I will give you is a more detailed version of this webinar with much more additional notes. You will get a mock exam based on the pre-scene on the practice platform, which I will then mark for you. So there'll be a mock exam, a full mock exam. And uh, I'll give you detailed feedback on your performance. And there will be a live session where we go through alternative questions or mock two. So on the actual day of the examination, there are two mock examinations. There are two mock examinations. Yeah, uh, so no, no question there. Do you provide support from now to the exam? Yeah, so the, the mock course would provide you with 24-7 support. It will give you a detailed version of this webinar. It will give you a mock exam based on the tips, marking, and it will give you a final live session where we look at mock two. Because in the exam, a lot of people don't know, there are two there are two exams on the day. That is mock, the exam one and exam two. So they're different exams and they can be, a, you know, last time the morning one was much easier, according to the students, it was much easier than the afternoon one. So there's two versions. So in our final session, we'll look at the alternative exam, the afternoon examination. So we'll look at that. The cost is 147. Uh, if you click this link, if you scan this QR code, you can find all the details on it. No lie. Okay. So please scan this QR code, save it for later. You can just do it on your mobile phone. Okay, so first of all, the end of the pre-scene. Uh, this document, um, uh, let me see what I can do, Emma. Uh, you will get a copy of this video at the end of the course, so you will be able to see it. So uh, pre-scene is available, enable you to be familiar with the business activities. So the idea of the pre-scene is not to tell you what's going to be on the exam. The idea of the pre-scene is to give you industry familiarity, familiarity with the industry. That is the main thing. So a lot of students, they spend hours and hours looking at every detail and every nuance, and it's actually quite a waste of time for them. So the idea of this is supposed to be for industry analysis. Most of the information will be on the actual day. So most students who sit the examination talk about the pre-scene being kind of useless for them. Only like less than 5% of their exam was based on what is in the pre-scene. So I've seen students go into detail and spend hours and hours on the pre-scene. It's not a good idea because basically on the actual day, you will get additional material and your question is based on the actual day material. Your question is not based on the pre-scene material, apart from providing industry analysis. So you will hardly look at the pre-scene on the actual day of the examination because you'll be given new information, which will change everything. Uh, the common question I get asked on these webinars is, can we get a question on X? Can we get a question on this? Can we get a question on X? And the answer is yes, you can get a question on anything. You can get a question on anything in the examination. Anything is possible in the exam. So anything is possible in the examination. You can get a question on anything. So last time, uh, in the examination, there was a question on Baldridge, came out of nowhere. Nobody expected uh, a question on Baldridge. You could not have predicted it from the pre-scene material. So anything can come up, any topic, any topic at all can come up in the actual examination. And some of them are, are, are predictable, some of them we can sort of identify, but some of them we can't. So there's always going to be unexpected things in your exam. Uh, so we'll, we'll, I'll try and highlight areas which I think are possible, but... I, Honestly, there are things which are uh, left field, which we cannot highlight and cannot predict. And that's what happened last time in the afternoon exam. There was a question on Baldridge. Nobody anywhere in the world predicted that that was going to happen. So anything can come up in the exam. Any topic can come up. So you don't need to do a lot of excessive research on the industry. Basically, they've told you the industry research already in the pre-scene. On the actual day of the exam, your examples are going to come from the post-scene material. So if you've got a choice of revising the syllabus, practicing your questions, I would spend your time on that and not spend time on the pre-scene material, right? So pre-scene is just background. It's not going to come up as a question in the examination. Practice your, your models and your basic knowledge in the exam is much more effective way to spend your last week before the exam. 
don't spend hours and hours researching. You don't need to, basically, for the exam. Okay, for the exam, what you should know are the key features of the industry. Ideally, practice a mock exam based on the pre-scene. And make sure on the day of the exam, you've read the pre-scene a few times, so you're familiar with it, and you won't need to refer back to it on the day of the exam. So that's basically the, you know, pre-scene is just industry background. So let's get into it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure when you saw football, you were like, oh my goodness, I don't know anything about football. You don't need to know anything about football. But you need to know how the industry, how the industry works. So let's get into the detail of it, right? So we know that this is about a football club called Atletico, Athletic Trans Central uh, for this football club. And it's very similar. It seems very similar to basically an English Premier League situation, right? So it's a football club. It's the way it's set up, the way it's organized. It's re really, it's really the English Premier League, but they don't want to say that for copyright reasons. So the, the question is really about revenues and costs. There's a lot of revenues and cost information in that. So when you're reading the question, what you've got to be aware of is that there are revenues and costs and, and the impact of revenues and cost in this industry and in this market. So the major cost is going to be the team salary cost, right? So, you know, any football club, it's the players that cost the most money and they're the major cost in the organization. If you want to, uh, if you're buying in players, it's going to be very expensive for you. However, there is an academy. It says five professional clubs have their own academies. It doesn't tell us anywhere in the case that AT has got its own academy. So it's a possible question about setting up the academy. Uh, what are the benefits and issues you may face in setting up your own academy? Academy is good because it gives you a cheap source of players. You don't, those players... You develop from age nine, they can go into, into the first team. They can be people who go into the first team or you can sell them. The good thing about selling an academy player in terms of profitability, the cost is zero. So in terms of meeting your financial fair play regulations, this is a zero cost for the company. So it's, it's very, it would be a very good thing if they don't have one. The exam question might ask you about the benefits of setting up an academy how is it going to benefit the benefit the club and what are the potential issues or problems they may face in doing so if you're going to buy in players which you, you know you want to buy in the best players it's going to be very expensive to do so transfer cost is very high when you have high transfer cost it reduces your profit which affects your financial fair play regulations which we talk about later the main revenue generator is the men's game. They have men's and women's teams, but the main one that generates the revenue is the men's team. But the women's team is growing. So the, after the Women's World Cup, the women's team and women's game is becoming more popular, but still it's a lot less popular than the men's game. So the main revenue driver is the men's game in terms of seat revenue, but in terms of TV sponsorship in the future. Now, the important thing to remember about... Uh, about teams that get relegated. So there's a divisional structure. If you're the lowest person in the division, you will get relegated. It is a financial disaster if you get relegated. And many teams in the EPL that get relegated have gone into liquidation. So if you get relegated, less people come to your games. The television money is less. The sponsorship money is less. If you get promoted, the revenue is more, the sponsorship is more, and the ticket sales are more. Uh, Mohammed said, would it be valid to discuss culture and academy? Uh, culture, absolutely. What can come up? Anything can come up. So yeah, the culture of the club uh, could be something on culture, how to develop uh, a culture, building a, building a stronger culture in the football club based around the youth is a possible question. Like I said, anything can come up. So culture, yeah, possible. And don't forget, uh, football clubs have got a very distinct culture. The, the values are very strong. The fans are very loyal. The fans are very critical. So yeah, culture is definitely a possibility that, can, that, that, that could come up in the examination. 
any question on culture, you're probably going to be using your cultural web uh, to analyze the football club. You haven't got much information, but there could be more information on the post scene. On the post scene, there could be more information coming up about culture. Okay, so one thing that uh, is relevant here is that they have supporters all over the world. And I just think about, if we're looking at the industry analysis, Manchester United have been very successful at getting a global brand for their business and a global brand for their organization. So they've got supporters all over the world. So I think it's a major opportunity, you know, and out, uh, in different parts of the world, you know, Manchester United have been very good at getting sponsorship and endorsements for their products. So it's something that these football clubs can look at going forward. And it could be a question about how to raise revenue and build those things. The reason why I say so is because the most recent article from the exam examiner is about partnerships. So there could be a question about partnerships in your examination. The articles for the ACCA are very good indicators of what will come in the exam, but we don't know when. But the latest article, the two latest articles in the ACCA uh, SBL uh, sphere, there's one on partnerships and there's one on project management. And we haven't had a project management question in SBL for a little while. So partnerships is something that, you know, I would definitely read the article if you're doing the examination. Make sure you read the examiner's article on partnerships. It's the latest one to come up. That could be something that they, you look at in your examination. Different competitions are going to be there. Basically, the longer you stay in the competition, the better it is for your revenue. So if you stay in the competition for a long time, you get more seat sales, you get more prize money, and you get more revenue uh, for the game. More seat sales, more prize money, and more revenue for the game. So you want to do well in the competitions. Generally, it's, it's good to be in these competitions, especially the international competition is the most lucrative. It's got the highest prize money and, and the highest uh, broadcast fees uh, for TV. Women's game is there, but not as popular. But again, it could be something. They might ask you something about the women's game. Women's World Cup has increased popularity of the women's game. So it's something we can, we can look at. Now, something that sets my... What I'm looking for is, you know, something that looks a bit unusual in the answer. And what a lot of students think, oh, I've got to look at the pre-scene and, and there must be something in the pre-scene. But actually, it's what they don't tell you in the pre-scene is something that is more likely. So you're looking for what information is missing. Uh, if you see information missing, they don't tell you much, then that is important. Uh, yeah. It seems like the international one is, is men only at the moment. And there might be one, but again, it doesn't say anything in the case. So it seems to be like mainly mainly the male game. Yeah, that's correct, uh, Jawara. So um, the corporate governance. Uh, yeah, so uh, Lee Marie Lim. Yeah, so I'll talk about the, the governance in a minute. The key point is... It says they've got accepted governance practice, right? So we don't know much information about, we've got a bit of information about the board, but not much. There could be much more information given in the post scene. They could, they could talk about that. So governance points to a question where they might suggest uh, that the governance is a bit weak and how to improve corporate governance. What are the weaknesses in the current governance structure and how could it be improved? We don't have enough information to answer that, but they could give you that in the post scene material. Are you a football fan? Is Mahesh, yes, I'm a, I am a football fan. Uh, I'm a, my, my team is the best team in the world, Leeds United. There you go. So, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so big win yesterday for Leeds, but let's focus on the exam. It's more important than that amazing win yesterday. Basically, more wins, more money, more seat, more seat revenue, right? So basically, the more you win, everything is good. If you win more, you get more prize money, you get more ticket sales, you get more, you're on TV more. It is something that you, you can do, you know, that's what you want to go for. 
And I just think, again, based on the examiner's article about partnerships, and if you read the examiner's reports, they always say, oh, we mentioned this in our article. We can't believe that students did not read the article. So commercial sponsorships is a big thing. And Manchester United have been the master of that uh, in, in terms of commercial sponsorships. Uh, I used to live in Singapore and you know, there's a Manchester United potato chip. They're endorsing everything. So it's something you want, might want to think about uh, as a question based on that partnerships article, which is uh, on the ACCA SBL website. So naming rights, again, uh, facilities, big revenue opportunity. If we can get sponsorship, the, the shirt sponsorship is very important. But also we can sponsor things like the stadium is also a major revenue source for the organization. Is there any past paper on partnership? Uh, yeah, there, there, are, there are past paper questions on partnership. There are, there are previous ones, but nothing recently. So it could be there on your examination. Um, so the one thing I've looked here is obviously the revenue from the kit sales is a major source of revenue. But there, there's something here about fake kits. I just thought it's a little bit obscure, but you know, what controls could we use? What are the internal controls we could use um, to, to prevent fake kits? It's just something off the wall that they, they may ask you. If people are buying fake kits, it is a revenue loss, right? So you're gonna lose revenue because they're not buying your kit. The other thing that like, the big EPL clubs like Chelsea, Manchester City, Manchester United, they're very strong on merchandising, children's products, using the brand name. So a lot of the EPL success is about the brand. So if you can get your product into more brands, you know, pajamas, uh, you can get um, baseball caps, you can get leisure wear. There's lots of opportunity here, especially in overseas markets. So it seems like later on we find out they're not really exploiting this, this issue about merchandise. It's not really being fully exploited. Also, later on we find out that there's concerts at the stadium and they can't do it because their stadium is too old. So it points to, points to a question about building a new stadium, which is a very popular thing to do. Yeah, can you just mute yourself, please, like, if possible, because I'm, I've got to keep muting everybody. Yeah, so please mute yourself if you're there. Thank you. So broadcasting right is a major source of revenue, a major source of revenue. Just to give you some background, you know, th that is what drives the, the growth of the game. And that is a significant thing. So you get more revenue depending on the number of matches shown, the more successful you are, the more matches are shown, the more revenue you get. If you get demoted to the other division, you're not going to get that revenue or you're going to get much lower level of revenue uh, going forward. Um, these are like the basic things. Uh, Manchester United, again, I don't like to talk about them, but they're, they have a very successful social media and they have a very successful like Manchester United TV, which is a global opportunity for you. So again, it's an, another major revenue. If you look at this company, we see that the, the financial fair play calculation is going in the wrong direction. You may be asked about opportunities for revenue generation in the future. How can we generate more revenue? So I just put there, MUTV is very popular and I will be doing a podcast in the next few days about how Manchester United gets its commercial revenue. So please make sure you subscribe to the podcast um, in the future. So yeah, MUTV is very popular. Th this club don't seem to have that level of commercial, right? So I think it's something that you, you can maybe look at uh, in the exam about how to boost our commercial income, how to get more revenue and how to make use of our brand is something that might come up in the case. This case is about revenues, costs and branding. So this company, this, this club don't seem to be super good at the commercial. So it's something that we can look at, especially with regard to that article in the ACCA newsletter. Um, 
Yeah, so this is basically the financial fair play, which means you cannot make a loss of more than 5 million. You cannot make a loss of more than 5 million. You've got relevant income coming in, and it's a bit like a cash flow. Yeah, so a good tech partnership, exactly. Uh, Lee Marie is Man, U, Man, Man City and SAP, a good example, right? Revenue generation, using the brand name to gain revenue, uh, a win-win for both partners. So this is something that, you know, they might talk about. It's not really like proper accounts, but it's mainly like a cash flow uh, statement. And that is how they judge the FFP. Um, basically, you cannot make more than a loss of 5 million. So this one is okay. This, then you take the next three, then you take the next three. This is bad because you've not made it. So recently, Everton Football Club have been fined points because they did not meet the financial fair play and they're in danger of relegation. So this is a material risk for your organization. You can get fines, loss of points if you breach it and it's going to have a major revenue impact on your organization. So this is a major risk for the business. The other thing I'm thinking about here in this paragraph, the other thing I'm thinking about here is um, ethics something about ethics here right so we know that football clubs have uh players do bad things so there might be something about ethical code of conduct somebody's done something bad and they uh how do you whether you will disclose it so there's been a lot of things recently about corruption in china uh, it's in the news yesterday. There's a lot of things about players gambling, uh, which has led to fines, breaking rules. So I'm thinking here about these stories. Look out for the post scene, some exclusive story about player bad behavior, and maybe whether or not you should disclose that bad behavior. So there'd be like an ethical dilemma, an ethical dilemma uh, in the post scene, something about a player has done something bad, but it's not been fully publicized or it's limited knowledge. Should you disclose what are the ethical issues? So look out for that. And that's a very big issue for football clubs, right? Um, basically, if you want to be successful, you guys, it's always a balance, right? So when we're looking at a football club, there's always a balance. If you spend more money, it's more costly. Uh, more likely to be successful. Uh, if you spend less money, you've got less costs, but you're less likely to be successful. So it's always a balance of revenues and costs. Yeah, Ryan Giggs is a good example. Yeah, uh, sleeping with his um, brother's wife. Yeah, so there's lots of examples about bad publicity. So it, it could be like an ethical dilemma. Emma says, how would you tackle a question like this regarding address players by behavior, pros and cons. Uh, Emma, any question on ethics, you always revert to the ACCA ethical standards, right? So the ACC ethical standards, which are professional competence, professional behavior, objectivity, uh, integrity. Those uh, ACCA ethical standards are, are, are the kind of guidelines in which you can judge whether or not the behavior is ethical or not. Yeah, Rashford, there's loads of examples of it. So anything on ethics, make sure you know your IFAC ethical principles and you use apply those in the answer because SBL is all about application. So anything on ethics, when he's asked it in the past, he wants you to apply those professional competence, professional behavior, integrity, objectivity, confidentiality principles into the answer. So that's how you would do it. The way they might word it is, I don't know, a player's been drunk driving, the police have arrested them, but, but they want to cover it up and whether or not the club should cover up bad behavior and this ethical, ethical dilemma. You go through all the ethical principles and see or not whether, whether they, you know, there'll be a recommendation about whether you provide transparency. So that's how it would maybe asked in the exam. That's how they've done it before. There's been previous questions. Uh, if you look at your past paper questions about um, break in, there's been a break in at the, at the uh, there was one about the there was uh, somebody broke into to the, uh, a building site and they got injured and whether to cover it up or not. So there's, there's been previous questions on this. So look out for those previous questions. Um, so 
ethical question, something about ethical could come up in the exam. Normally, uh, when they ask ethical, it would normally be a professional mark skepticism question in the exam. Okay, so we know we know a big part of the syllabus is risk. So you've got all these risks. Potential question is going to be about risk management. How do we manage the risk? They may pick out five or six of these risks, ask you to analyze the risk, and then uh, you do risk analysis. So if, let me ask you if a question asks about risk analysis, uh, what... If, if a question says analyze the risk, what do you talk about? Tell me in the group chat if a question says analyze the risk, what do you talk about? Analyze the risk, what do you talk about? Yeah, Rachel's correct, right? Risk, impact, probability, right? So risk, impact, probability is what you talk about. It's not SWAT kitty. It's risk, impact, probability. That's called analysis, right? The question might be, analyze these risks in terms of, and if it says that, we look at likelihood and impact or impact and probability. Then they might ask you, Kitty, what they might be for part B, they might ask you something about um, risk management. How do we improve risk management? The alternative question might be they give you the risk management strategy, but it's rubbish. And they ask you to comment on the risk management strategy and suggest alternatives. Okay, so yeah, so transfer, avoid, reduce, accept. You've got a lot of risks here. You know, if you're going to prepare, maybe looking to prepare uh, questions, you know, about look at these risks. What what kind of strategy would you look at for each of these risks? But they may just pick up three or four in the exam, ask you to analyze, ask you to review the current risk management strategy and, and is it good? And then suggest alternatives. That's a typical SBL question. Analyze the risk, analyze the strategy. Is it good? Suggest alternatives. Classic SBL. Yeah, so... Audit committee, yeah, four lines of defense is fine, yeah. Uh, th things you can talk about there. They asked four lines of defense quite recently, but they could again. Stakeholder management, you've got lots of stakeholders here, but again, what I'm looking for in the pre-scene is what are they not telling us, right? So we've got not much information. So when they talk about stakeholders here, what I'm thinking about is stakeholder analysis question, right? and stakeholder management questions. So they may pick out some of these stakeholders in the post scene, right? Yeah, Lee Marie, hi, uh, interest in power is the analysis, right? Who are the key players? Who are the high in, who are the key players in stakeholder management? So look out, make sure you know your Mendelo matrix and make sure you can apply it. And not just the Mendelo matrix, but make sure you know the risk management the risk the risk management uh, strategy how to manage the, the like if you've got a key player you must engage closely all those risk management strategies in Mendelo in the exam they won't ask you the theory but you must know the theory so you will apply it in the examination if you describe a model in the exam you are not going to get any marks there's no marks in SBL for description of any model and you shouldn't really be actively using any model, but you can use it to help you construct your answer. Um, they're not doing very well. They're kind of at the bottom, but this 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 says to me that if you've got bigger crowds, there seems to be a correlation between bigger stadium and revenue. Okay, so because they've got a lower stadium, it means lower income, less commercial revenue. So it says to me a question, potentially they might ask you a question about building a new sta stadium. Building a new stadium could be a nice question. It's, it can cover two things. Stadium, it could be a suitability, acceptability, feasibility question. And many EPL clubs have built new stadiums. So you might be asked a suitability, acceptability, feasibility, but also it would tie in with project management. 
it would tie in with project management questions. So, of course, building that, building that stadium will be a project. So they could then bring in something about project management, which is the second article, the second most, most recent article by the ACCA SBL examiner. So, yeah, there'll be loads of things about grants, uh, you know, suitability, acceptability, feasibility of a stadium. So that could be a question. But again, they will give you a lot of information in the post scene and your answer should be based on the post scene. Don't go into the exam with a pre-prepared answer because it will always be a disaster. And the examiner has said so, right? So you cannot pre-prepare, but just look at, make sure you know your suitability, acceptability, feasibility. Make sure you know your project management roles. Make sure you read that article because, you know, that could be very predictive of what's going to come in the examination. So make sure you know you've got your technical knowledge is strong and you can apply it to any question in the exam. So the bigger your stadium, the more revenue you've got generally it leads to more success. Yeah, so that is the uh, project management. Thank you, Lee Marie. Uh, that is the project management. The most recent one is partnerships. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm thinking about this. Uh, can we move to a new stadium? And when I see anything about carbon footprint, my alarm bells are going off and I'm thinking about integrated reporting, CSR, right? So make sure you know your six capitals and think about maybe how we can apply those six capitals to a football club. So that's something you might want to think about as well. The other thing that Manchester United have been very successful about is digital marketing. Digital marketing is one of the key things that Manu have been successful with. I'm going to do a little podcast about it. But it says to me that this is a driver of success, a driver of revenue uh, in the future. So I'd be looking for a potential question about how can the football club improve their e-marketing? How can they improve their e-marketing and it'd be like leads into like e-business, e-marketing strategy, a good application question for a football club. So look out, make sure you're familiar with all your digital marketing tools. There's been lots of previous questions about digital marketing. It will be an application question, not a listing of the tools, but which ones are relevant for this organization and for this business, right? So digital marketing is going to be a key tool. Possible question. So how do you use social media better? Man, you have been very successful at developing an app. They were early adopters of website and it's a revenue generation tool. It's a brand tool as well. KPIs, pretty straightforward, what you'd expect. Just something here about family owned business. Uh, it's a family owned business, but family business always going to be an issue of conflict. Most football clubs are owned by some kind of family business or rich people, basically. That not many are listed. A few are, but not many. Not many clubs are listed. Um, if you look at what's happening in the EPL now, there is an issue of takeover, right? Issue of takeover, and um, many like uh, American, rich Americans. Uh, and rich people from the Middle East have taken over the club. So potential question, acquisition, right? You've got an offer to buy the club. Should you accept the offer? Suitability, acceptability, feasibility question, right? So family owned, maybe they don't have enough money. They're not rich enough to support it. So suitability, acceptability, feasibility question. It's very common that football clubs do get taken over all the time, but some are not successful. Okay, so uh, they don't have any recent success, but they've got a strong base of supporters. It's like a club that's been successful in the past, but they're not successful at the, at the moment. But uh, it's very common in EPL, we get clubs like that, where, where they were, they're strong in the past, but they're no longer strong. So they haven't been very successful, uh, which is like bad for revenue, uh, less revenue, less TV money, etc. A uh, women's game only got 3,000, but again, they might ask something about that because it's very popular now to ask about the women's game. Women's World Cup has increased popularity. The board of directors, are, we don't really have much information about it apart from it being a family member. 
what they might tell you in the post scene is who these non-executive directors are. They could be rubbish non-executive directors. They will tell you in the post scene that they are rubbish. They're, they're inexperienced. There's no separate IT director. They may ask you about who's missing. There's no HR director on this board of directors. You know, um, so there are, we can't really tell about the governance until we know more information, but they may give you more information. Um, I thought there was an audit committee, right? There's, I think there is an audit committee, but we don't know who's on the audit committee. So, yeah. Um, so we don't know about the committee structure at all. Yeah. Uh, so if these NEDs, audit committees should have people with a financial background, we, these might not be, have a financial background. The question that might come up is asking about corporate governance, right? Do they have corporate governance uh, improvements to make in this business? But we can't really tell right now. Be, you know, always look for the things they don't say in the case study, which is indication of things they're going to give you and say on the actual day. Just on a, a thing here, it seems like they've got a lot of players. Uh, hold on, Emma's saying, would it be appropriate to highlight the fact that each function, each function is responsible for recruiting and appraising their own staff? I think it's like again because it's in the if it's in the post scene, I think it's like not unusual and it won't come up in the exam because it's in, it's already in the pre scene, so it's not something that will come in the examination. Emma. So I think it's highly unlikely to come because it's in, it's already mentioned and it's not unusual for the function to recruit and appraise its own staff. It doesn't seem very unusual to me. It's not like bizarre. So I I think it's not unusual and because it's in the pre scene, it won't come again. Uh, yeah, so the players, EPL has got 25 player limit. They've got a lot of players, high cost, uh, something. Also got a lot of coaches. They've got almost one player per coach. So, yeah, I just wonder whether or not that is a little bit high cost. Some, something like that. EPL only allowed 25 player limit, unlimited under 21. So, I don't know, it looks like a quite a high number, I think, relatively high number. Um, yeah, again, uh, I won't read too much into no risk committee, but it, they could they could ask something because normally the company, the risk committee is not a compulsory committee. Most audit committees also take the role of risk. So I just put here, there is an audit committee, but do they have a financial experience? You should at least have one one thing. So again, yeah, so the question might be, how do we improve corporate governance? So so you'd be looking at corporate governance best practice. Uh, I'm looking here at a question on IT security, right? So, you know, maintenance of data is in accordance with data protection legislation. Just, I'm just thinking that, and it kind of did come a little bit last time in the exam, but just make sure you're aware of the of the IT controls, there's been a data breach and all the information has been stolen. It's not an unusual thing. Uh, how would we secure? What is the backup strategy? What, are the, what is the impact of the data breach? What are the recommended IT controls? So make sure you know your IT controls. Uh, it's an old stadium. Therefore, it's going to be a high maintenance cost uh, for your old stadium. So it's saying to me the full capacity, which suggests there's latent demand, suitability, acceptability, new stadium, and it could be an out of town stadium because the current one, it's either going to be a building a brand new stadium or expanding the current stadium, making it bigger. Yeah, so it seems like new stadium to me. Um, so if they're going to move a stadium out of town, you've got a lot of issues about that. You know, how are you going to do it? Uh, it, would, it, was, it would be suitability, acceptability. They do own land, so they could potentially sell that land. That land is in a city centre location. could be very lucrative and help to fund the new stadium. It seems there's a lot of like the commercial is not strong, right? Health and safety. 
requirement again could be a question on internal control internal control question right how do we maintain there's been a health and safety issue only 30 suites basically the hospitality suites are of higher margin it should be having more than 30 that's really where a lot of football clubs make money on hospitality yeah so there could be something about damaging the reputation of the council sporting events yeah that's fine uh, but they're not really exploiting the full commercial potential that's what i'm feeling here right but if they had the new stadium they'd have more commercial they'd have more more stops more shops and more hospitality it, it could be like a very good commercial income more seats more revenue more money to spend on players so there's, there's, but there's also some, some disadvantages as well so i don't think they're really they've got a small shop you know look at manchester united they've got shops all over the world they've only got a small shop again i'm thinking you know question about digital marketing how do we like boot this up they own the land and and the land which is adjacent so they, they do own the land and it's leased so they could sell this land potentially or they could rent it out to the council um and that could help to fund so there could be like something about financial analysis funding strategies for funding the new stadium how are they going to fund it yeah so there's lots of issues here training academy uh is quite recently been built uh 30 years ago so they've upgraded it five years ago but the under 18 sometimes have to use their own facilities which they hire so that if they've got their own stadium they can put everything in one place there's a cost saving yeah um will the current lease income be excluded from relevant earnings why would it be excluded rachel i don't see why why lease income should be excluded mm. but it's still it's still an income right it would come under other income source it would still be an earning for the company right oh for the financial fair play okay yeah 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 could be yeah yeah it, it, it would be a profit for them but maybe it's good under the in the financial fair play yeah correct so if they've got a new stadium it's got brand uh there's no lead sponsor so it suggests that commercial is quite weak right uh they've got uh advertising the stadium brand name but they've not sold the name and rights so again opportunity for revenue income again i'm thinking this is a setting alarm bells off for me here about overseas suppliers right there's been previous exam questions where they've asked about the overseas supplier is exploiting and beating the workers and using child labor so i'm just my senses are like something about ex, you know how ethical issues about using the overseas suppliers is what i'm thinking i'm thinking a question about the overseas supplier is treating the workers extremely badly how do we control it what are the actions we take etc so you know i think something about this is like setting my alarm bells off Okay, so um, it seems like, again, this to me is not exploiting their full commercial potential. Um, you know, there's only, uh, they only got the kits online. They're not really having a full range of products. So again, there's something that we can do in the future about licensing and partnering, okay, e-commerce exactly. Um, I think this is, is this the last page? No. Um, this looks like integrated reporting to me, right? It sort of suggests to me integrated reporting, right? You've got human, you've got social, you've got natural capital. So question maybe asking about how can they provide more transparency and more disclosure by adopting integrated reporting how would it apply what are the benefits what are the problems of doing that in a football club this one also points about ethics i mentioned it before ethical question related to integrity 
ethical question. So something about, I mentioned it before about the players. Yeah, exactly, Luca. Uh, if we've got better training facilities, it's going to be better for the club. Yeah. So revenue is increasing, but the uh, earnings before interest is going down. So it suggests they've got high costs, which probably is going to be the player costs, or it could be the maintenance costs in the stadium that are quite high. But quite often it's going to be the player costs. This is a concerning trend. If they don't meet this, it's a big, massive problem for the organization. Television money is the major source of revenue. But if we've got a new stadium, we've got more sponsorship. If we've got a new stadium, we've got more retail. If we've got a new stadium, we've got more match day money. If we've got a new stadium, potentially it could lead to more prize money because we invest in the club. So a stadium can solve these problems, potentially giving you more revenue, more revenue will help with your financial fair play. Yeah. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the pre-scene case study. I'm ready for any questions now that you may have. If you want to get the podcast. Okay. Okay, this is a long one. Um, should we allocate 30 minutes to planning? Best to spend 10 minutes reading each, each case study and bullet point. I'm worried about timing in the exam. I'm getting points. Uh, can we multiple exhibits be tested? Okay, so let's the first one. I'll do the first one first, Farhan. Um, I recommend at least 45 minutes on planning. At least 45 minutes on planning before you start to write. Planning is very important. So 45 minutes. Definitely 30 minutes is too short, to be honest. I think you should plan your answer in advance is the, a good technique. So planning, um, it's not about, if, it's, if you plan better, you, it's about the quality of what you write. And yeah, I go through that on my courses where I talk about how to plan effectively. Uh, whenever I do my mock exam, uh, which is the students are sitting it right now, is based on the pre-scene. Um, they do it on the practice platform. And then I do a debrief. I've got a video debrief of how you plan on the practice platform, how to do it. So yeah, definitely 45 minutes. Can multiple exhibits be tested? Absolutely. So it can come from more than one. There's normally a big one that it comes from, but it can come from more than one. Quantitative analysis, should we be learning the key ratios? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, you can do it. It doesn't really come up very much, the key ratios. It's never really been asked recently, a question on key ratios, but there's, there's the six classic ratios, are return on capital employed, profit margin, gearing, liquidity, interest, cover return. Uh, profit, the six, my six key ratios are ROCE, return on capital employed, uh, gross margin, net margin, uh, liquidity, gearing, interest, cover. Yeah. But they don't often ask questions with a pure financial analysis questions like that uh, recently. It hasn't been the case. Can we, can we still get full marks? And, can we still get full marks on the question just by analysing figures? Whenever you, whenever you, um, what you've got to think about is the exam is um, supposed to be a simulation of reality, right? So if you're going to present, do a presentation of the board, and you say, "Hello, board. I've not done any calculations." Would the board be happy with you? Think about it that way, right? So calculation doesn't get you a mark. It's actually the comment and interpretation because most questions on calculation will have analysis professional marks and you get marks for saying, what do the numbers mean? And that's your job as an accountant presented to the board. It's not saying, here's a load of numbers I've calculated. You've got to explain what they mean. That is what SBL is all about. What do the numbers mean? What is the correct format for a briefing paper? Briefing paper, honestly, is just heading briefing paper to from subject. The one you've got to watch out for is the uh, report. Report must always have a conclusion. If you miss the conclusion, you will lose half the professional marks. 
So briefing paper, don't worry about the format. It's just briefing paper to from. It's like a report without a conclusion, basically. Briefing paper should not have a conclusion. Briefing paper should not have a conclusion. Amy, which articles did you say to read? I would definitely go for the last the last three articles, and there's a whole load of articles, to be honest, and they're all pretty good to read. Uh, the last article is strategic partnerships. The last article is about strategic partnerships. The one before that was project management, and the one before that was about cloud computing. So they asked about cloud computing in the last examination. So definitely read the last two, but you can, you know, the more you read, the better. Uh, and I may be writing, uh, please follow me on LinkedIn. And again, scan this code, follow me on LinkedIn if you're not already, because I will be posting articles next week in relation to the examination. And I'll be posting anything new I find, I'll be posting it on my LinkedIn, on my Facebook. Can we avoid technical articles which seem relevant to the public sector or governance? Yeah, why not? <laughs> You've got limited time, Jeannie. So, uh, so yeah. You, you know, you've got to you've got to boost your time. We've got a Q and A here. Do you think Pullis Diamond may be applicable to the exam in the pre scene? Uh, thanks, Amy. Um, as I said already, anything is possible, right? So, in my podcasts, and if you're like preparing for the exam, most of my podcasts are ten minutes long, right? So, I've got articles there about Pullis Diamond. Could it come up? Anything's possible, right? Anything is possible in the exam. So when nobody's expecting Porter's Diamond, it doesn't seem like Porter's Diamond is going to come up. It doesn't seem really like that, but it could do, right? Anything is possible. So I have got podcasts about Porter's Diamond. I've got po podcasts about cyber security, and they're all 10 minutes long. If you're on the bus or on the train, listen to my podcast. It might make a difference. And many people said uh, it, it did in their examination. I will be doing a new podcast uh, this in the next couple of days. So watch out for my new podcast. Podcasts are on uh, podcasts are on Spotify, they're on um, Apple. If you've got an Apple phone, Harry, they're on Apple Podcasts. Um, I'll just post the link to the Apple Podcasts. Yeah. There we go. If you're on Apple. Yeah, so this is Apple, they're also on YouTube as well. So all the podcasts are also in the YouTube channel as well. Um, but if you're on Apple, I know many young people now, they favor the inferior technology of Apple iPhones. So you can do that. Yeah, so great way to revise 10 minutes. And I am going for the, uh, I've, I've been nominated for the podcast of the year this year. Uh, so please vote. If you're voting for the podcast of the year, please, please vote for me. <laughs> so, yeah. Anybody got any more questions? So anything could come up. Uh, if you want to buy the mock and, and, and get detailed feedback and one-to-one -one support for the exam, there's a link in this QR code or just message me. Okay. Um, about it. So the cutoff for the mock exam, if you want to do my mock exam, so I've written a mock exam, which I think will be very similar to what you're going to get in the exam. It would be, I mean, uh, anything can come up. Anything can come up again. Anything can come up. You know, so they could ask it again. It could be asked in a slightly different way. They could ask about like corporate social responsibility question, uh, something like that. So it, it could be like, in with the stakeholder questions. So it could be something similar to that, right? So, yeah. Okay, so any more questions? Last call. Yeah, so the mock exam buying will close on Monday, Monday night. And if you want to, the mock exam, you, you have to be able to sit it on Tuesday or Wednesday. That's when the window will open, but you will sit it on the practice platform, so it will be a full simulation. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you.
Yeah, I think you can use it. I think you can say, uh, don't make your whole exam about Manchester United, right? Um, don't make your whole exam about Manchester United because um, if your whole exam is about Manchester United, but you can use it as like a little example. Um, you can use it as an example. Um, um, let me just do this. Somebody's asking about the link. Hold on. Sorry, yeah. Here it is, Rachel, for you. Um, yeah, so what you would say is uh, commercial income, make it about the football club, but maybe put in that Manchester United have been very successful, uh, have been very successful at um, this, or like Ma what Manchester United have been successful about building the app. So you, you don't want to make the whole answer about it, but use it to illustrate as an example, but don't overuse it because the case is not about Manchester United, it's about 80. That's what I would say. Yeah. 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 So what you will get is you will get an email and sometimes uh, it will say memory right after this this thing ends. And the memory is the video of, of this webinar, so you can watch it back. Uh, I will also be posting it on YouTube as well. So yeah, it'll be on YouTube by the end of today. So if you missed anything, if you want to sort of go through anything, it should be, it should be there for you. So if you get an email that says memory, memory is the video of this of this webinar. Sometimes it doesn't work though. So um, so please let me wish you good luck in your examination. And uh, you know, if you uh, if you're doing your exam, please click like and subscribe on my things. It massively helps me if you click like and subscribe on my YouTube things and Spotify. It will help me to like gain publicity. Uh, and, you know, please write nice things on LinkedIn and, and talk to me on LinkedIn. It's also very helpful um, for me. Yeah. Uh, so after this, after this, uh, after we, I log off, you will get an email which says memory. Just give it about 10 minutes because it's going to build the memory, which will be a video of this podcast, right? So it will be shared with you instantly. If, it, if something breaks, which it sometimes breaks, I'll put it on YouTube by the end of today. Okay. Okay, I'll wish you goodbye and uh, good luck. Good luck in your examinations. Yeah. Uh, please keep an eye on my LinkedIn and YouTube and podcasting. There'll be a podcast hopefully in the next couple of days. So uh, I'll try to record it this weekend. So watch out for the podcast. It will be about Manchester United commercial income. So um, watch out for that podcast. Yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. Please keep in touch and let me know if you pass your when you pass your examination. Bye bye.